Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gather around for another episode of Let's Play Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Now, in the last episode, we left off just at the top of the Cursed Clock Tower, and that's where we're going to pick up in this episode. Now, the boss door is just to the left, but first, make sure of two things. The first is that you've collected that flying humanoid soul in the background using the Mandragora soul ability. And the second is to get a proper setup before taking on this boss. I'm actually going to abuse a trick to beat the boss really quickly. Now, since it uses a soul ability, your weapon really doesn't matter in this fight at all. Uh, however, your armor does. I recommend using either the mage robe or, if you have it, the elfin robe, which will boost your intelligence quite a bit, as you can see. So equip that. And then for your accessory, I recommend Skull Necklace for its defense and intelligence boost. Now, if you have a soul setup following the one I'm about to give you, it works really well. Uh, start with the Disc Armor and then Flying Humanoid to raise your intelligence and luck. Remember, your intelligence can boost up to 75 points if you do it right here. And then finally, either Lilith or Dead Pirate to get uh, double damage from behind, which I'll use. But either one works well here. And of course, this fight uses seal number four, so make sure you have that memorized before you head in. Anyway, let's go take on the boss. And is it death? <laughs> nope. This is Zephyr. Now, if you can, head over to the corner immediately and start powering up your flying humanoid. I got to 57 points of intelligence. And then basically, that's it. You just pwn Zephyr really quick. <laughs> oh, I screwed up. There we go. As you can see, I'm doing like 150 to 250 damage each hit on Zephyr, uh, abusing the flying humanoid. So. There are other good strategies, but that's how to do it quickly. Anyway, we got the Zephyr ability, which allows you to stop time. And don't forget to switch back all your uh, equipment. Now, if you want a good strategy, I'll post, I, I'll post another video if you really want good strategies on these bosses. Anyway, um, that doesn't abuse tricks. Anyway, this is the Zephyr Soul ability. Basically, it just pauses time and allows you to kill enemies, but it's not really very useful because a lot of enemies are immune to it. So, heading to the left, we have a choice. We can go farther to the left or down this little shaft down here. And we're going to start by going down, of course. And now if we hit this little switch that breaks open the wall that I pointed out in the last episode, and, whoa, baby, that was close. We'll just continue down the clock tower. And this doesn't look very promising. Yeah, we're going to need some ability that allows us to fly to get past that spiked corridor. So we'll have to come back here once we can fly. Oh, these Medusa heads can be very dangerous in these spiked corridors. You could take upwards of 200 or so damage if you're not... see? <laughs> 120 just without the petrification. So be careful here. Those were some fancy moves right there. <laughs> I thought I was going to get hit by that Medusa head for sure. Anyway. Heading back up to this part, if you head left, there is a warp room. Now, I'm going to save here just in case it crashes, because it likes to crash on these rooms. And we're going to head to the Dark Chapel. Alright, and here we are back at the Dark Chapel. Looks familiar, I'm sure. I've only been here about 80 times. Getting quite a bit of lag for some reason. I think it's all the sprites. Oops, I have Zephyr equipped still. You can see that it froze Frank there. Oh well. Sorry, Frankie! You can 
can see how easy all of these guys are with the disc armor and all of my levels that I've gained since being here the first time. This place is a cinch. Anyway, if we head over here, there's this little spiked trap and then one of these puppet master walls. So, of course, you know what to do. There we go. And another spiked implement. Watch out for that thing. Ah, there you are, guillotiner. Anyway, we're heading into a new area now. That is subterranean hell. <laughs> I must admit, it's a creative name. And of course, we've already got the dead pirate soul, and what's this? A save room. You know what comes after a save room, right? Yeah. A boss battle. If you guessed a boss battle, you win the $64,000 question. But first, we've got a new enemy, the Cave Troll. A popular mythological figure on YouTube. Anyway, we'll be back. Okay, so far I have the Cave Troll soul. Uh, this allows you to attack by lashing out the tongue. Oh, that's a popular trolling technique, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, as you can see, I used the flying humanoid to get the soul really easily. And there's the soul in action. Basically just sticks out his tongue. Now, I have to get its item drop still, so I will be back as soon as I've got that. We'll see you in just a minute. Alright, I've got the Cave Troll's item drop, which is a Pila or Paella or however you pronounce it. Anyway, it's a consumable. There we go. A veritable cornucopia of seafood. And I should probably show off the Cave Troll's level 9 ability. I gained a whole bunch of souls trying to get that drop. And here it is. How disturbing is that? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> when I first saw that, I about shit myself. <laughs> anyway, make sure to switch into your uh, intelligence boosting equipment. And this time for souls, I recommend the Killer Clown for range damage. And then we're going to abuse the werewolf trick for this fight just to show it off. And finally, I'll do Lilith for the intelligence boost this time since we'll be fighting head-on against this boss. Oh, little Une, you didn't think I was going to leave you, did you? Too bad. And here we go, it's another boss battle. This guy is named Rahab. Now, you want to avoid its icicles at all costs, because those do about 70 damage or so, I think. The main goal is just to wait for it follow its bubble pattern and then hit it whenever it's out of the water. Now once it makes these little ice shelves, this is where you can abuse the werewolf trick for massive damage on its weak point. See that? Basically you press the werewolf button in to activate that soul and then quickly use your uh, killer clown ability. You can get about two or three hundred damage in very easily that way. It's a little cheap, but it makes the fight much quicker than it usually is. There's not really a reliable way to hit this guy otherwise. At least that I could figure out. He's always moving around. There we go! And of course this is seal number three. It's much easier than the last seal we did. And that's Rahab. Pretty easy. Poor thing crumbles into ash though. All right, and we get the Rahab Soul, which gains the ability to move underwater. Notice it's a gray soul, so it's an ability. And there's the boss core. Basically, this allows you to jump infinitely in water and to double jump once you're out of water. So, Anyway, I think we're running out of time here. We'll explore Subterranean Hell in full in the next episode. Thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.